If you want to get in a gunfight in Houston, it seems that withdrawing cash from the ATM is a great way to do it. You aren't wrong. Hi everybody, welcome to today's lesson here at Active Self Protection. I'm your host as always, John Correa, and joining me this fine day, our CEO, Stephanie Widener. And we are back in Houston, Texas again for two lessons today. Wilderness Tactical has been around for longer than the gun you're carrying has been, and they have been making high quality products for concealed carriers for literally decades. I wear their Low Pro belt every year. The webbing is the best in the industry and I won't wear anything else. If you're looking for a good CCW belt, check them out. Our perps are in the Mercedes here and they have followed a woman home from the bank. She withdrew a sum of money from the bank. We're actually gonna hear as they go in uh, what goes on inside the garage. Hey, In this second one, a guy has withdrawn a large sum of cash for his business. These folks in the minivan have followed him and you're gonna see our perp run up behind. There's our businessman with a sack full of cash and he's just gonna run up and keep his pimp hand strong and smack that guy upside the head and then run off with all his money. Cops are still looking for both of them. We're gonna think about lessons. Man, we got lessons to learn today. Uh, I just wanna invite you, if you wanna support the work we do here at Active Self Protection, to join our patron member program. We have two levels of patron membership, silver and gold, and it helps us pay the staff and make sure that we're able to continue to make great content for you. But for all of us, let's go check out our lessons. So I think the big lesson on both of these, Steph, is that it, when you withdraw money from the bank, you better be careful of what, what happens directly after that. We say it all the time that attention buys you time, time buys you option a little, prevention is worth a pound of cure, all of these things. If you know you're going to be carrying something of high risk, um, take some precautions to keep yourself and, and your belongings as safe as you can. I think another thing that we see out of this video is that in both cases here, right now this perp is, is driving a, a relatively new Mercedes-Benz. The other video that we have today was driving a very nice minivan and whether or not that's their car, which I kind of doubt, or that they steal a nice car in order to fly under the radar. So, you know, just looking for janky cars following you ain't gonna do it today. No, and I think both of the, in both of these videos, we see that they were in their garage, in this case, doing his daily business at work. In the next case, they're comfortable with their surroundings and their actions and what they're doing, and it's really easy to let your guard down in those moments. And especially when you have large sums of cash and you just came from somewhere uh, where you got that, you, you need to keep heads up all the you time. You need to keep heads up, paying attention. Attention buys you time, time buys you options. Now, of course, we see this guy run in and run inside an open garage door. Gosh, how many times have we said that your garage, when the door is up, is a transitional space? So many of us get uh, very comfortable when we get into our garage, but until you've got that garage door closed, it's open to the public, is a transitional space, and is a place where attack is more likely. It's incredibly predictable that someone's gonna get where they're going and sit in their car for a few moments and get their things together, and I think they recognize that, we're counting on it, and. Uh, and took advantage of it. So lesson here, get your garage door closed. As soon as you get in the garage, get that garage door closed ASAP. I'd also strongly recommend that you back into your garage if you can. You're either gonna have to back in or back out, and so backing into the garage lets you see what's coming from the outside until you get the garage door closed, and is another way that you can more easily pay attention. Now I get it, some people are like, I can't do that in my garage, or it's more difficult, and if you can't, you can't. But if you can, backing into the garage is very wise. Now we don't get to see what happened on the inside here. If you go read the news story from Houston PD, um, what the woman said is she started screaming and hollering and her husband heard her, came down the stairs, and this guy runs off with nothing. He ran off empty-handed, but the cops are still looking for him. I guess they weren't able to get a good plate or it was a stolen car or something. Now, let's think about this next one. This guy has withdrawn a large sum of cash and done so for his business. Now, I know a lot of people are thinking, wait a minute, why would you do that for your business? But, you know, there could be a number of reasons that you need a, a bunch of cash in your business, and that's fine. But if you're gonna do that, you gotta pay attention to what's going on in your world. You got a lot of cash on you, so that means not just using your eyes, but using your ears. The car just drove past him, that she should have been paying attention to that, and then stopped, and now we have this guy running up behind him. That's not going to be silent, and our guy's not paying any attention to what is going on in his world at all. So just simply being curious of your world. Remember, when we say pay attention, we're not talking about being paranoid, we're not talking about 
thinking everybody's out to get you. We're, we're talking about being curious of your environment. See what's going on around you, particularly again, when you have high value items, you've just left the bank with a lot of cash. There's a, a likelihood here, and what we see in Houston, we're seeing all over the country with people following folks out of the bank and stealing their money. So you've got to be curious of your world. And because if not, you're gonna get the pimp hand. <laughs> <laughs> and you see him just running down the street at all. There's no reason for him to be surprised. Here he takes his first hit. It knocks his glasses off. Um, he And he's completely surprised by this. Yeah, and, and again, so you might have to defend yourself without your glasses on. If you mm. wear corrective lenses, they may not get knocked off your head as the opening salvo. Now, I don't think this should have been the opening salvo. This guy should, should definitely have been paying better attention because again, this guy hit him with a closed fist is what it, the, the uh, link from Houston PD says. That, that he you know just comes up behind and whacks him in the head, steals his bag. Well, if he had been paying attention to his world, this would not have happened, right? So, so he would have definitely had more opportunity. Now, of course, he'd have to have more than just attention. You'd have to have some skills, some plan, and, and a great attitude in order to protect yourself because if this guy wanted it, he could have strong-armed him or whatever. But certainly allowing yourself to be run up from behind and smacked upside the head and your bag stolen, this is just easy money for a perp. Yeah, you don't want your first signal that you're in a, in a fight and under threat to be hit like this, so your glasses flying off your head. Yeah, smacked upside the head, not the way to do it, right? Now, one final thing I will say is this guy's running off. I totally get it that our victim wants his stuff back. And as this guy's running in, you're gonna see again, our victim is gonna run up and try to stop him. I really think that's not a great idea. I think that the reason that it's not a great idea is that you don't know what else is in that car. You don't have a gun on you. You don't have anything else that if he decides in that moment, oh, I wanna fight this guy or his partner inside's got a gun or something like that. At that point, the unfortunate truth is it's the smarter and wiser thing to let it go. Yeah, he's running up on them at great speed and I get it. He was just hit, he's frustrated, he's upset. He just lost a bunch of money, but he could have lost so much more here. That, that van is about to back up at high speed as he's running directly at the back of it. They've already shown blatant disregard for him and his life and he's just putting himself at, at much greater risk here. Yeah. So while I get it, you really have to make those decisions ahead of time that you're not gonna fall prey to that predator mentality and, and, and chase down people that have wronged you in order to, to retrieve your things or to punish them. Uh, it, it could have lost so much more here. And, and I get it, friends. People are gonna say, well, wait a minute, John, you know, it's, it's, somebody's gotta stand up to these thugs. And mm. I totally get it. I get that you'd be angry about losing that, a bunch of money. That, that makes all perfect sense to me. We're talking about being wise here. We're talking about being prudent here. We're talking about making sure that we don't endanger our life for money here, because we can always make more money, but we can't gain our life back if we lose it. So make sure that we're doing the right things here. Let's pay attention to our world. Let's be real careful when we withdraw large amounts of cash. Let's make sure that we're watching those transitional spaces, that we're curious about our world and paying attention and taking appropriate steps to cover our ASP.